Dark Aussie. The place of coal chain in post-harvest losses. Nigeria is a country rich in a great supply of agricultural products but post-harvest losses is a great concern. Nigeria is a country endowed with variety of food, but most of our agricultural products are lost to insect attack, rodents, and microorganisms. Losses also occur during harvesting handling, packaging, pressing and storage of these agricultural produce. Survey carried out on post-harvest food losses in some communities in Nigeria revealed that as much as 20 to 30 percent of total grain production, 30 to 50 percent of root and tuber and usually high percentage of fruits and vegetables are lost with a substantial amount recorded during storage. In view of this, post-harvest losses have led to food insecurity in the country. Experts say that the goal of universal food security would not be attained if problems associated with post-harvest losses are not prevented. Also in 1998, another expert further explains that the perception of post-harvest losses is a challenge for government, non-government organization and international development organization. In developing countries like Nigeria, over 85% of food consumed by poor household in rural setting is obtained from the farm and the inability of food at all season are affected by post-harvest food losses. Hence, this unavailability of food at all season causes food insecurity. Therefore, food security is a concept that has evolved during the 1990s far beyond traditional focus on the supply of food at the national level. This concept has been given a general definition in time past but in recent tuned, there has been divergence of ideas on what food security really means. The World Bank defined food security as access by all people at all times to enough food for active and healthy life. The Committee on World Food Security defines it as physical and economic access to adequate food by all household members without undue risk of losing the access. USA as Bureau for Africa, 1986, defined it as when all people at all times have access to sufficient food to meet their dietary needs for productive and health. A report by SADC in 1997 Regional Conference agreed that the working definition of food security should be, food security equal food availability plus food access and acquisition plus food use. Post-harvest losses have been the subject of considerable debate and speculation in recent years. In Nigeria, efforts made to increase food production include the establishment of river basin authorities, agricultural development programs, Operation Feed the Nation, establishment of research institutes, agricultural input supplies and bulk purchase companies. However, increased food production is not the final solution to food security. It has to be complemented by good harvest and post-harvest practices to reduce the amount of food loss. 50% reduction in post-harvest food loss in Nigeria will also reduce the need for food importation. In the field, there are three main stages of food losses harvest stage, processing stage and handling stage. These losses cause both qualitative and quantitative losses. The cry of post-harvest losses is no longer news in the agribusiness sector in Nigeria. From time to time various concerned groups or individuals are airing their own opinion, yet the steps to take this Hydra head situation by the neck is gradually coming to be. A director with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, Abuja, Dr. Amin Bhavandi speaks on the effort of the Ministry on the Cold Chain issue. How do you mean? Um, we saw not only really absent. Um, quickly, uh, on his behalf, I want to thank the Organization of Technology and Development of Cold Chain in West Africa for helping the Minister's office. Uh, this country of poverty in the world is unacceptable. And it is premises on so many factors, which include poor infrastructures in the rural areas. And these poor infrastructures has given birth to so many headaches 
One is a valuable time of the farmers being lost. Uh, after you produce and uh, you've lost almost 50% of it at the end of the day. Loss of agricultural business status. Agriculture is no longer in business. Increase in poverty amongst the producers, poor nutrition, food safety problem. Uh, we are not able to do justice to them, but let me just align them. <laughs> poor urban development and the absence of protocols to be able to market these products. So this coming together is very paramount and very essential. And this is major component uh, of uh, technology to drive agriculture. Uh, quickly, I want us to know that coaching technologies are test important of technologies in agriculture as it covers so many areas in dairy products is essential. In meat products is essential. You see that the government policy now has given ample opportunity for people to invest, particularly in poultry products. Uh, you can see that we can generate a lot of businesses around processing of poultry products, uh, which rested in coaching uh, technology. Fruits, vegetables, seafood, fisheries and mushrooms. You can see that a lot of things rest on coaching technology. So this morning, I want to thank the organizer once again. And uh, we need to know that if this coal technology is secured, nutrition will be secured, food safety will be guaranteed, and the development of human capital will be assured. So agriculture is all involved, which has been the numerous partners that are not, that cannot be enough. Development partners, NGOs, associations, and the organization of, for technology advancement of coal Then we also have fruits, vegetables, like I said earlier on, seafood, fish fish, and drugs. When I say drugs, many of us, the one we don't forget that they are the one producing the plant material that are being processed and it needs to be taken care of. Your malaria drugs, they are responsible, at the And mushrooms that can help you to reduce your prostate issues. As a man. So, firstly, I'd let me thank Almighty God for making it possible for us to be here today and to witness this historical event of first West African Coast Chain Summit, which I consider an event projected by Guinea under the plan project to showcase resources and emerging challenges in the course of the project implementations. Like just mentioned to us, this organization is born out of well-executed projects in collaboration with Federal Minister of Agriculture. And we need to give kudos to the implementers and to the federal government. Also, I would like to assist this opportunity to welcome all stakeholders of this program project and thank them the coordinators and project officers of Potable Loss Alliance and Nutrition Plan, who seamless effort towards sustainable development of human nutrition for the agricultural sector in Nigeria. My special appreciation is extended to the global players who make possible resources for this type of value. Here, I would like to let you know that. The post Harvest Loss Alliance for Nutrition project is one among the many that began with strategic planning with input from Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development and other key stakeholders and approved by the Honorable Minister on presentation of the component activities and scope. Like the boss of the Federal Institute of Industrial Research, Ashodi, Viral, Professor, Mrs. Gloria Ilmo lamented that the country post-harvest losses have risen to over $9 billion annually. 
LMO explained that some experience more than 50% loss like in the case of fruits and vegetables due to their perishable nature, adding that crops like grains record less than 50% or post-harvest losses. The Firol boss, further disclosed that some food products never get to leave the farm before they experience spoilage, damage or waste while others happen during transportation, storage and in the markets. Apart from the biological reasons for PHL, our farming systems are mostly at the subsistence level and thus with no appropriate mechanization and infrastructural facilities to back them up like good roads, processing equipment, storage equipment, poor market distribution, etc. She seeks to educate that reducing biological deterioration as well as eliminating these inefficiencies and ineffectiveness of the systems, without even any increased food production, will go a long way to improve food availability year-round. The loss in nutrients that may have otherwise helped to reduce micronutrient deficiencies and chronic malnutrition in Nigeria is appalling. We cannot go on like this. Dr. M and Dr. M and Bob and D spoke further. This they are partly accounted for the smooth operations and the sources recorded so far. And therefore suggest that other intended donors should emulate the approach, the approach as given by them to sustainable uh, activities that are trend in the West Africa. Project started with identifying the numerous different challenges in the nutrition landscape with horticultural perishable commodities, fruits and vegetables most affected, noting appreciable post harvest loss of almost 25% annually. Like I said earlier on, you see that when you do mathematical farming, you will see that the energy invested and lost is almost 55% in fruit and vegetables. Likewise, we have contaminated products from dairies and fish aquacultures and even meat. And you can know what the interpretation of that is responsible for so many adverse effects poverty, problem of nutrition, and food safety. Of course, the topic is issue of mycotoxins or uh, platoxins that resulted due to poor handling, which is threatening the stunted growth of the children and the cancer of babies. Further, consider that production activities are in the hands of over 70 percent mostly farmers, with inappropriate technologies for preservation, storage, transportation, marketing, infrastructures and lack of skills for management does underscore the focus on various tools and techniques for reductions of post harvest loss. The plan project identified the use of renewable plastic crates rather than cane baskets, fixed solar power coat rooms, mobile coat rooms for storage and preservation of fruits and vegetables, thereby extending the shelf life and reduce the losses and providing manufacturers of the equipment for ease of linkages among the stakeholders. What they are just to present here is to let us understand the relationship between the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and some of these donor agents that we work together to identify the fabricators in the nations. And part of them are some of the food that you see around here. We build both hardware and software. When I say software, we mean human development, human capacity at various levels, down to the farmers. Mind you, the practice back in the field has a cardinal effect on what happens even at the coastal rate level. You give a case study of onion, if you are not paying attention to some of the good agricultural practices before harvest, it has a chemical residues in our products. So all these aspects have been taken care of and working with the donors and uh, assuring the, the group here this morning 
that the fellows know and what we continue to work with them. Again, it is worthy of note that the federal government through the Federal Museum of Agriculture at programs and projects where the game plan project took its concept or its component. The government has recorded good success in post harvest loss reduction through various project activities, which include produce value addition and distribution of 10,000 returnable plastic crates, thermal cabinets, and solar power dryers, food juice extraction machines. A serving of cool room for fruit and vegetables as sample for private sector investors, capacity building and cold chain technology, and research development on relevant areas that will lead to sustainable nutritious food security to the nations. Furthermore, the government has embarked on some food fortification program to guarantee provision of nutritious food under the school feeding social investment program. However, the Post-Harvest Loan Reduction Program of the Nigerian government is not limited to perishable commodities, but cover but other cross value chain with a view to elevate the livelihood of Nigerian farmers and marketers of agricultural commodities through providing processing equipment at highly subscribed costs to encourage cutting processing and then productions and reduce post harvest losses. I can simplify what I just said to you there uh, to make you understand that there are several components when we talk about cold chain technologies that we need to carry along. Uh, right from we need to consider at harvest what happened. And we look at maturities, we need to build the capacity of the farmer to understand the maturities level stage at which to harvest all farm packaging material we need to look at this because if there is mishandling before getting to the cold level story level there are issues so we have what we call stackable crates they promoted by federal and agriculture in collaboration with the donors and we bought the federal and agriculture has bought thousands of them being distributed at Rural levels for better understanding often agree together that the majority of the product, especially the fruits and vegetables industry, thereby impacting on human nutrition at the local level. Which certainly will be improved due to income and wealth creations. It is our hope that at the end of this summit, participants from Nigeria and other West African countries would have acquired technical know-how and skills and awareness from the donor partners to enhance the mitigation of the negative effects of use of inappropriate post harvest loss reduction technologies. I'm aware that some donor partners are willing to engage government and co-group experts. Let me assure you that Nigeria is ready for partnership. I hope to meet with you. I wish you all a successful summit. Once again, you are welcome. Currently, there are about 12.9 million hungry people in Nigeria. 37% of children under 5 are stunted, which reflects failure to consume adequate nutrition over a long period of time. 18% of children under 5 are wasted or acutely malnourished, while 29% of under 5 children are underweight. Only 35% of children between 6 and 23 months consume iron in their diets, a very necessary mineral for formation of red blood cells and cognitive development and about 52% within the age of 6 and 23 months are fed appropriately based on recommended infant and young child feeding practice. Reducing food waste could potentially prevent climate change and help end global poverty. In the first study of its kind, the Food and Agriculture Organization FAO, calculated that the world's population wastes 1.3 billion tons of food per year. That food waste also results in 3.3 billion tons of greenhouse gases entering the atmosphere. Food waste also costs the world $750 billion annually. 
The United States alone wastes $161 billion a year. Another study calculated that $265 billion per year would end world poverty and hunger by 2030. The FAO study, Food Wastage Footprint, Impacts on Natural Resources, focuses specifically on the environmental impacts of wasting food. 54% majority of this waste occurs during the production phase, and developing nations struggle most during this part. On the other hand, 46% of food waste occurs during the distribution and consumption of those products. Developed countries waste more during the consumption phase, they are responsible for 31 to 39% of total food waste. Reducing food waste requires positive change in all phases of the food production and consumption chain. The FAO also suggested teaching more environmentally friendly farming practices and better analysis of the balance between supply and demand. As a result, the entire food production process would be more efficient and profitable during both phases. Not only does reducing food waste affect the economy and environment, but it also has a positive social impact. If consumers in developed countries reduce their food waste, then farmers in developing nations would have more land and other resources. These farmers could use the extra water and space to grow the foodstuffs their countries, and other developing nations, need. Both the Environmental Protection Agency EPA and FAO provide toolkits for reducing food waste. The EPA's toolkit also provides a guide full of information specifically about the US. It also contains an implementation plan for starting a local advocacy movement. Here are just a few ways individuals can help reduce food waste. Food waste clearly has a widespread impact in all avenues of human life. Better communication and balance between farmers and distributors would save both money and the environment. More thoughtful purchasing and consumption at the individual level would also contribute. If the world can cooperate and reduce food waste, then there is greater hope for the end of environmental destruction and global poverty. Frank Ozzy.